Let's dive into the down and dirty on industrial real estate. You've got cash and like any wise person would, you want to make sure that cash is being productive. You've watched the ups and downs of the stock market and given the current economic climate, you're worried that investing in stocks is just too risky of an option for a return that could potentially be low. But what if you instead placed your money into a piece of industrial real estate? <music> First, what is industrial real estate? Well, industrial can be broadly defined as all land and buildings which accommodate industrial activities. That can include production, manufacturing, assembly, warehousing, research, storage, and even distribution. Now, why should you invest in industrial real estate? With retail giants and even boutique retailers moving a large part of their inventory via online sales, it's easy to see how the need for this kind of property is steadily increasing. In fact, industrial vacancy rates as a whole in the US are at a mere 5.1%, and we're even lower for the smaller to medium-sized industrial properties. For years, infill industrial property was overlooked and redeveloped into more attractive assets like multifamily, retail, and residential. But now that a good portion of the available industrial stock has disappeared, the demand is heavily outweighing the supply, which is good news for investors. Small to medium-sized industrial property is typically less expensive than retail office and multifamily, both for the buyers and for the tenants renting them. So it can be a lot easier to get a foot in the door for owning this type of asset. Industrial warehouses are oftentimes single tenant properties with long-term leases, meaning that you will have a lot less to deal with in terms of managing your property. Here are a few different strategies for buying and owning industrial property. There are many different ways and avenues of owning and operating any kind of commercial real estate, but here are a few that I feel are best when it comes to this asset type. Value add. If you can find an outdated or neglected piece of industrial property, this option can be very rewarding. And subsequent strategies such as buy and hold or buy and sell or flip can make this a very profitable method for industrial investment. Value add investment consists of renovating an existing property and bringing it up to current market standards. It's a good idea to find a general contractor who can walk through any potential spaces with you. If you're looking for a general contractor, check out this video here on the 18 questions to ask before you hire them. They will be able to tell you what improvements need to be made to bring your property up to speed and also give you an idea of the costs. Pretty important for an investment. Next is a market value or retail rate purchase. Another way to purchase industrial real estate is to find property that has already leased or is ready to be leased. Buying an industrial property that is at market value is very similar to buying any other commercial asset. You will want to ensure that your returns are at a desirable rate and that your property is in good enough shape to lease with minimal improvements. If you're unfamiliar with cap rates, that's basically the percentage return that you could expect if you paid all cash for the property. Next is development. Developing industrial property also has the potential to create very profitable returns. With such a low supply in the market, there is a lower risk associated with this kind of development. But of course, you'll want to analyze whether or not this is the case in your specific market. And as always with development, I do have to add, risk is very relative because development is inherently risky anyway. First, you will need to find a piece of undeveloped industrial land. Some commercially zoned land allows for warehouses, so depending on what kind of building you want to construct, you may not be limited necessarily to just industrially zoned land. Check out this video here on everything you need to know on commercial real estate zoning. Next, you'll need to figure out what it will cost per square foot to build. This is another great reason to have a trustworthy general contractor on your side. You'll need to know what you can fit on the piece of land that you purchase and make sure that you will have adequate parking for your development. Not to mention everything else that comes with the development. I can't stress this enough. Development is the most complicated part of commercial real estate. I would highly recommend finding a partner that has developed real estate before and work with them so that you can learn everything from somebody who is already experienced in that field. Now, if the numbers make sense, and your market demands the intended product, this could be a great way for you to own industrial real estate. Once you've developed it, you've leased it up, you can refinance the property and hold on to it, or like I said earlier, flip it for a cap rate. Owning industrial real estate is as easy as starting your search today, and it always helps to have an experienced broker to assist you in the process. So I do recommend, of course, 
as always, that you find a good broker to help you. Now, if you'd like to take a deeper dive into industrial real estate where we talk about everything you need to know, check out this video here and I'll see you there.